Day two with the active crisis training, and I've got Jason with it. What's up, dudes? And we've got Neil McLean, one of the founders of Active Crisis. What's going on, everybody? All right, Neil, so what's going on today, man? So today we're gonna do some uh, squadron standard shooting. It's uh, essentially a set of techniques that we use on the range. We do it every time we get to the range. It knocks off the rust, gets everybody utilized, used to the motions that we do. So a lot of high ready, punching out, low ready, check drills, reloads, transitions. Uh, at the end, we'll get into a little bit of comp competitions with everybody and stuff like that. But a lot of these drills we're going to be doing is techniques that we we utilize for shooting for specific to the house. Okay. Gotcha. So we're going to do some flat, flat range stuff, learn some cool things, and then go apply in the house. What okay. do you think, Jason? I'm ready to turn it up, man. All right. Well, let's get back to the range and learn some cool, th cool things it. with these guys right here. Yeah, let's do it, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey guys, back here with one of our lead instructors. He's gonna go over what we're actually trying to do here this morning on day two. Yeah, pretty basic day. Uh, it's the foundation of all the stuff we do in the house. So essentially what we're gonna do is break down each element of how the gun functions in a combat setting with the kit and transitioning to the pistol and reloads and all that. And it's honestly not, the drills aren't that complex, it's just, very simple, but we, there's very specific ways we like it done, so we're just gonna get those hammered home today. All right. Welcome back, guys. We're here talking about what we're doing in this video. Get into the shooting standards, the basic shooting standards, which everything that we do here will and can transfer to the house, whether it be working uh, reloads, manipulations, work, and manipulations going from rifle to pistol, um, stoppages and malfunctions, knowing the difference between when it runs dry to when you actually have a stoppage or a malfunction, and then working through that to get to your pistol. So. Mm. The taste. The taste. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, First thing we're gonna talk about is kind of a basic, we're gonna get online, we're gonna load, and how we like to load is we like to do our pistol first, okay? And make sure it's there and it goes away. Good confirmation that's good to go because that's your insurance policy. And then you do your rifle, okay? So we'll just get online and we'll just load and make ready. That's the first Ooh. thing we're gonna do today. Pretty basic. Okay. So this is from yesterday. We got a little taste of this. This is how we're this is how we're kind of operating. Okay, this is our this is our non. I guess it would be our non-shooting. We're looking for work, kind of administrative. We're 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 looking for work, kind of thing. Okay, so this is where we're going to be in the house. All right. The reason why we don't do this is because I would have to do this awkward stuff coming up, like finding a way to go. You know. It, you're, there's a lot of reasons why we don't go through low ready and we did a lot of that. We talked about that yesterday quite a bit. But high ready is where it's at. So high ready, I can walk around, no big deal. I can walk through the crowd. I'm in a perfectly safe position. All right, even though Mythbuster said this bullet can kill me if it falls back on my head. You know, this is the safest direction we have, right? Maintaining the standards while manipulating and also working it through the high ready. As we talked about before, SEALs like to run everything at the high ready because to them it's a safer way of doing things. Plus you can do a lot of things in the admin time that you have up there, whether it be walking through, going through thresholds, barricades, whatever it may be, but also being able to see the rifle and it also be pointed up in a safe direction. Remember, they do a lot of shipboarding and a lot of tight confined spaces, so up is always a safer way to go. But, if we're here all the time and we're in a safe direction, we're entering that threshold and we're looking for work, we need to get on that threat as fast as we can, okay? And we as a community decided that that speed is from one to 1.1 seconds. is a reasonable amount of time, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna do 1.1 seconds. There's a standard and then there's, there's two standards. We're gonna do the 1.1, we're gonna do the lower standard. So, which is still pretty difficult. So the way this kind of works is you need to have an acceptable sight picture, which I was talking about yesterday, where you're not trying to aim, we're not trying to aim Nat's ass and hit the, 
hit the dot every time, right? We're just trying to get in that circle, all right? The dot's just a reference point, all right? The trick to this is at, it's not necessarily seven and in, it's a little farther out, but 25, it starts to kind of, it starts to kind of do this as you get closer. But we have a thing called mechanical offset, okay? So that's what we're kind of dealing with at the closer range. So a mechanical offset, is the, the, what it's saying is, is that if I'm trying to hit that dot, look where my, uh, look where my sight is, okay? Especially mine, look how high that is, right? So, it, so where do I have to aim? Three or four inches up. Four inches high. Yeah, yeah about pretty high, right? Yeah. But that starts, that changes when you go back to 25, depending on where your Z is. It's, pre, it's pretty much 25 and it meets up, okay? And then you're kind of good. But that mechanical offset is pretty critical because if you're trying to shoot a target, you kind of have to be, you know, a little higher than than, uh, you, than you think you have to be, okay? So don't aim directly at it, all right? You're aiming above it at whatever your offset is. So Matt's Trigicon. Uh, with a Trigicon, you're probably gonna have to shoot here, I'd say. So like this line is a good reference. Uh, if you have a 1.93, you're probably just above it or just in, in and out, like right on the line, that kind of thing, okay? So I don't think anybody has anything higher than that. And what we have here is a little bit of difference between combat marksmanship versus actual precision. What we're trying to do is get everything within a circle that's acceptable. And we do that, we gotta take in considera consideration the factors that are at play. We are within 10 yards, so you do have that mechanical offset. And if you don't want to know what mechanical offset is, it's the actual center line of your bore, bore versus the center line of your actual optic, whether it be LPVO or red dot. And that's zeroed at a specific point when you actually zero, but whenever you're in between that or closer than that, there's gonna be a physical offset in there. So typical rule of thumb is an inch and a half to two inches is your center line. And when you do, when, if you have a target here that you're trying to hit, you actually want to raise your optic up about one to two and a half inches up and then you will hit. That is typically what a mechanical offset is. Your mileage may vary due to what you run, but it's just a generalized idea. So on this first shot, I want you to do four or five shots, whatever you're kind of comfortable with. This mag is going to be our high ready mag, okay? So don't go through the whole thing. All I want you to do is find out where your mechanical offset is and kind of get comfortable where you're gonna shoot from, okay? So don't worry so much about the recoil. We're only doing one shot. We're gonna take care of that stuff later, okay? I want you to point out, I want you to, I want you to stand facing at the target, however you're feeling comfortable, good combat shooting stance. And what you're going to do is I'm going to draw the line out towards, so I'm basically, at the, at the target line for my eyesight, I'm gonna draw the top of my suppressor out and then I'm gonna point at it. And then once I start to find my, my red dot and where I wanna shoot, I'm gonna start to bring it back and before it's all the way back, I'm gonna shoot, okay? That's kinda it, so it's gonna go, you guys good? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna go out, I'm gonna find it, I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna shoot before it's all the way pressed to my, it's like right, it's like a right before it's all the way pressed, okay? Mm. So use every cool to like kind of get into your shoulder. And then you're able to do follow-up shots after that, okay? It's almost like I'm taking a line the back. All right, friends, that looked good. Good first round. So a couple things I saw that'll just clean a few things up. You're really wanting to draw the line. So with you guys with the longer rifles, I, it's it's clearly a difficult thing to be trying to look at the very top of your muzzle if you have a if you have a 16 inch rifle and then a can on top, right? So just pick a reference point that you can appropriately draw that line with, okay? So maybe something on your rail, bottom of your flashlight. Here we are talking about acceptable sight pictures and what we see when we actually draw the line. And what he was talking about drawing a line is from where we are at high ready, once we bring it up and present, once we get that first sight picture and actually see and breaking that shot. Now, the best thing is you can shoot while before the rifle gets fully placed and seated into your shoulder, which is okay, that's fine, but we wanna be also to be able to be quick while doing so and also having positive control of the gun. Now, when we're doing this, the whole point of this is to slow down 
so we can actually process and get that break that shot within the time constraints also within the circle so bear that in mind all right we're gonna speed it up a little bit on this one basically what we want to do is we want to just get it down to let's try to get it at two seconds okay let's see what let's let's figure out what two seconds feels like all right there we go okay one and a half all right so basically <laughs> what i really try to slow down all right so i want you to get under i want you to get as close to two one and a half to two seconds as you possibly can all right just as close to that as you can no it's fine one one three yeah, yeah. it's good it's good yeah. Yeah. Not that smart. 1.17, I was doing the same shit. <laughs> 1.23. <laughs> Alright, I think that's all we're getting out of you. It, it, it does make you go faster. This is <laughs> now you gotta speed it up. We're doing one, we're doing under a second. Okay? Same exact thing you just did, just under a second. Stand by. Second flat. I want to make sure I'm accurate, you know? I want to make sure I'm accurate. I'm not just shooting. Okay, I want to make sure that grouping is tight like that. One. <clears throat> one second flat. Stand by. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, four. Stand by. Getting back to the basics, love it. Adding speed and <laughs> competency to it. Hey. Under time, always breathe a little bit of pressure, but one point one four. Oh, we got it. All right. So. That was a little bit of a surprise for me. I thought everybody was gonna go slower, but uh, it was just like half my side that went slower. So it's kind of, do you see what I'm saying? Where it's like, if you're slowing things down and doing things properly, it's easy to go fast. Okay, that's kind of my point on that. Okay, high ready. It's the foundation, okay? It's really important. It's our first shot for every single drill we're about to do, okay? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the next drill, which is a combat reload, okay? So, let me pose the question. What's more important, or what's faster? What Call of Duty says. What does Call of Duty say? Switch to your pistols, pistols always, always faster than <laughs> reloading. <laughs> which, <laughs> one, which one is it? <clears throat> which one's faster though? Transition. To I would say transition is faster. Depends on the person. Just send some rounds down range. Pistol. Depends on the situation. What is a good reload? Is like 1.8, two seconds maybe? The answer, the answer is it doesn't matter Okay. <laughs> which one's faster because this is my guarantee, right? You don't know what crazy stuff's happening in here. You don't know what's going on. You don't want to take a guess at that. Especially when you enter a room and he goes click, you got to just, it's, it's out, right? There's nothing else you can do. You're not going to be around with it, okay? So that's why the transition is so important. But we need to know how to, we need to know how to reload quickly still we need to be efficient with that all right that's also important because the transition comes when you really need it all right but a reload comes when you kind of just need new new bullets so that still needs to be fast all right here we go over a couple of different reloads are to be administrative or basically um, emergency reload mainly this one is an emergency reload meaning the gun has gone dry or that there's a mer that there's a malfunction and we need to get this gun back up into the fight now there are two trains of thought now he our instructor did reference a nice little call of duty reference which one is quicker gassing the gun back up or going to your sidearm obviously going to your sidearm because that is a lifeline and it's gassed up and ready to go so you can still continue to be in the fight but after you hit do make sure you do all your scans and assesses make sure the threat's down put that pistol back into its holster change that mag gas up that gun and be ready to go on this first one i want it to be deadly slow okay i want it to be like a creep just a total crawl all right and i want you to just get the whole mechanics of everything i want you to feel the kit out and all that then we'll start to speed it up all right so how this looks on drills is if your if your bolt is back to the rear which it should be if your gun's pro functioning properly after the drill uh you can go up and you can go in and just do that kind of thing bolt forward and then mag away okay and then you're just gonna keep on doing that over and over again you got it see what i'm, see what I'm doing here i'm taking my full mag putting it around in i'm putting my empty mag in so i get a bolt lock cool shooter stand by out, shoot, up, strip it, in, home. Oops. 
So this sling being up here is not good. It needs to be back here. In fact, I prefer it somewhere over here, perhaps get a new handguard. But uh, it's getting in the way and you guys are gonna see it. So, quick reload. So I'm like, you see this? So, it's just there and it's not working out. So I gotta get it out of the way and reload. So it's not working out. So this is a great example. It should be right here and obviously, Jim just showed me that. I didn't know that it makes perfect sense. Of course it does. This is where it needs to be. It doesn't get in the way. So I'm seeing a lot of guys when they're punching out, they're doing what I mentioned earlier with the tomahawk. What you want you to do is you're punching straight forward as if you're trying to strike somebody in the face that's right there. Punching straight out, getting on your sights and back on. The big thing that I'm seeing a lot of guys messing up is you're not manipulating the safeties correctly. The big reason we do this is for like getting our muscle memory down for the touch points. I'm punching out, I'm going on fire, I'm firing, back on safe, back up. The real key on manipulating the safety, get used to utilizing that constantly. That's what you're gonna be using. using. Um, that's the biggest thing so far on the high ready. I'll have more touch points on other things that I keep seeing, but that's the one thing that's really starting to drive me nuts is guys not manipulating the safety correctly. Here we go, working speed and what we're doing, keeping that accuracy tight, but also doing those tight weapon manipulations. Now here it is, another rule of thumb working the safety while doing these manipulations. A good rule of thumb for me is what I like to do is whenever my eyes are in the optic, I like to make sure I flip that safety down if the threat presents itself and actually engage or take that shot. But once my eyes leave the optic, I flip that gun on safe and then I go and do whatever I need to do, whether it be admin work, looking for more work or doing whatever. So that's a good way to, good rule of thumb to keep it going. Many different strokes for different folks, but that's just how I do it. All right, we will. Okay, so um, after this drill, uh, we're gonna really start nitpicking on every little thing is when it comes to safety, trigger, and high ready. So those are gonna be the three things we really harp on. Um, so start to kind of get it into your head that we're gonna, you know, maybe we're gonna ha we're gonna stick Neil on you. Might happen. Oh, and if you're if you're thank you, if your shots are out here, you gotta slow them down. Because once you get back here, then you can start speeding it back up. All right. So right now we're shotgun pattern. We need to go as slow as you need to to get that to get that pattern tighter. Okay. Because that's the that's the whole point. When we're in the house, you're literally going to go in. It's going to feel suicidal, but you're going to go in and you're going to go dead slow. Because we're trying to get the mechanics of this whole thing. You're going to go dead slow and you're going to go bang, bang, bang. That slow. Okay which isn't realistic for real life, but we need to get this stuff dialed. We need to get our muscle memory down, okay? So, that's what I want. Actually, you probably want it like, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Now it keeps it out. What'd you say? Now it kind of keeps it, the it flings keeps it. out. It stays out a little better. You're good. Cease fire! All right, we good down there? All right, range is cold. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to transition. So the transition, going to the pistol. Uh, the new thing for this is going to be how you sling your rifle, okay? It's pretty critical. So I do, I try to do it the same way every single time, but when I go, let me, let me make a comment real quick. So, I saw some guys kind of looking at the, like doing a really exaggerated, like looking at the port, see what's going on. That's totally up to you. I have an opinion on that where it might not be a good opinion for people because I really know if my gun went into a malfunction and I really know if it, if it's, um, if it went dry. 
Like I just know the difference, okay? So <clears throat> if there is a malfunction where there's a double, it doesn't really matter if there's a malfunction or not because this drill is designed for something where Pete is trying to f kill me, all right? So it doesn't matter if it's a malfunction. The gun's not working, all right? So if it doesn't work and it goes click again, then you gotta go to your pistol, all right? That's, that, that's the game we're playing. Here we are now stacking onto the drills that we're doing. We're doing rifle to pistol manipulations. Now the greatest thing about this is you're now getting your lifeline, which is your secondary, and getting that primary out because obviously there was a stoppage or you're out of ammunition. Quickest thing to do is to switch to that pistol, engage, get those hits on target, get, get this pistol back into the, uh, the holster, gas up your rifle and keep on going. Best way to do it. As we do it, we transition and make sure that we have and give our hands something to do, um, whether it be turning the gun inboard and getting it out the way to make sure you don't have to jostle your body, but also making sure that this is a stable platform to you engage as threat. So there you go. When you go to draw your pistol, what you're trying to do is you're trying to click or bang click is you're trying to do this. All right, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to switch, switch the two of them out. Okay. Two hands working. All right. That's what we're trying to do. You're trying to, you're trying to get two hands going at the same time. Three, zero, two, first shot in 0.96. So that's all we're doing, okay? That didn't look like I was rushing. I wasn't moving around my gear. Just all, all is just arms, okay? Oh, that's yeah, see how mine is? Yeah. Alright right, guys, first half of the day is pretty much almost over. We've done some drills. Uh, so I'm just going to let the instructor talk. What do we do today? Uh, we did a few high ready drills, we did some transition drills, and uh, we're about to get into some check drills after that. Uh, what, what is a check drill? Uh, it's going to be uh, one shot with the rifle, rifle's going to go dry, transition to your pistol, shoot with the pistol, then the idea is getting your rifle back up and working, uh, figuring out what it was, what caused a malfunction, clearing that out, and then getting back on target with your rifle. Gotcha. And what do we have after this? So what we did this morning is we did very basic drills, like I explained earlier, and what we're doing is building those up to get to the point where we have a more complex drill of, built by all the basic drills. And then once that's done, that's just something we're gonna keep repping out. And then once you have those basics down, that's kind of all you have to do for for weapons manipulation, working around your kit, reloads, high readies, all that. For the house later on. Exactly. That's gonna be pretty much it. Yep. Jason, what do you think, man? I'm loving it. Everything that these guys have been building up, literally all will translate when we go into the house. So I'm stoked for it. Exactly. I've, I've learned a couple of cool things. Definitely moving my sling position. I mean, I, I had it here, it gets in the way if I'm, if I'm out of it, just like that, it gets in the way when I do my reloads. Yeah. And Jim showed me that. And it, it, those little things, man, little things make a huge difference. So I will be repositioning my sling attachment over here. And uh, of course, I'll be uh, running your sling, which we'll talk about it later. I, got, I can talk a little bit about it now, yeah, actually. Go ahead. Because you know, uh, so that's an another issue that I do see people running into with the two point is when they go to reload, the, the slings get mm -hmm. in the way. Single point's awesome because it's actually completely out of the way. And you do get a lot of manipulation with the gun. Uh, the big problem with them is when your hands free, smacking you in the nuts when you're trying to transition or anything like that. So this one you can take and quickly clip it in, sit it down, and I mean, this is such a, hang out. Such a cool concept, and you came up with this. I did, right? yeah. This yeah. is uh, back in 2015. Yeah, McLean uh, Corpse. Is that yeah, what McLean it? Corp. I designed it based off of another guy's sling, actually. Um, I'm trying to think of the name, of it. Advanced Armament. Okay. Um, no, Gunslinger Armament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, developed it based off of his sling. I liked his design but I didn't like some of the finer things of it so then we came up with our design um, to essentially try and make things a little bit more efficient. Um, so it's a single, single sling, it's a single, single point, point with a built-in retention system so, essentially. Yeah. Freaking amazing. Advanced gunslinger armament, that was it. This would have yeah. solved my problem today so it will because I'm going to start running that. Yeah. So there's that guys, uh, so this is it. Now we're going to finish the other part of the uh, flat range and then go to the house. Cool. Good deal. And going into a deeper breakdown of what Neil McLean was talking about, here is the McLean Corp sling. It is a two point and a one point sling all built in together. You see here as I'm rocking it in admin mode, it allows me to go hands off and the rifle doesn't flip flop or turn. When I'm ready to do work or when I'm ready to shoot, I just pop this up. 
like that, which is uh, QD'd on here with this QD point, and now I'm in single point sling. Now remember, with the sling being like this, it never has the possibility of getting bound up at the bag well, so it allows me to be free with it and also have the maneuverability of having a one point sling. After I need to do what I need to do, gassed up, ready to go, and I go back into admin mode, I just take this, bring it here, clip it, and I'm fastened and secured. So it sounds like a good sling option if you ever need one. All right, this is sort of the last drill that we're gonna do. It's not the last drill of the ones we typically do, but this is this is this is a lot of information um, and a lot of stuff to kind of change and fix. So <clears throat> this is called a check drill. Okay, all this is is a transition with a reload to your rifle. Okay, so basically what I got to do is I shoot, bang, go to my um, pistol. Okay. Put my pistol away, bring my rifle back up, reload it and shoot, okay? That's all you gotta do. So it's pretty much, all we're doing is just adding on that extra extra element, okay? Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up, shoot, goes dry, same thing, rifle goes down to my uh, left or right, pistol comes out, do the shot, bang, this goes away, I'm gonna grab it by the, I'm gonna grab it by the clip, the, I'm gonna grab by the clip, <laughs> and I'm gonna lift it up, and then I'm gonna, all I'm doing is stripping it, then this comes up, in, bolt catch, and then we shoot. Got it? Pistol out, shoot, pistol away, back up, and pull the mag out, new mag, bolt lock. That's all we gotta do. Cool? This is really like a drill. Okay. I'm not gonna be here and go empty on my pistol, right? Oh. And just like keep on going. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, think I had the full mag in yeah, there. Just that's what I had. Oh, that's not mine. That's yours. That's See, there's your name on it. We shot them both. <laughs> no. All right. I come in and I like raise it up. I pull. Yeah. And I cut down. That bad or how to end that? Go ahead, do that again. So if I'm at high ready, yep. I'm gonna come up like that. Yep. Uh, yeah. And th yeah, that was right. And you I understand you said you're coming up like that. Okay. So tell me again. So question? If I'm at a high ready, I'm yep. gonna come in. Is that like proper to do or do I need to more so just bringing the rifle up to my line of sight without ducking my head. Oh, yeah, don't, you want to have your head, like, where, so you want to have your sights where they're going to move your head. Okay. You don't want to bring your head down. Because every time you do that, you're doing this, and then you're doing that. So you want to have your head right where it is, come up, and then you can see your sight. You want your head where, uh, still. Okay. Right, so it's like, boom. You're bringing your sight to your head. Okay. So what we're going to do, is you can stand anywhere you want along this whole thing. And we're gonna go with one round in the chamber for rifle and a full mag, a pistol, and an empty magazine in the rifle, okay? You know the setup, familiar from today? We're gonna shoot that far E-type, okay? Then we're gonna reload and shoot the plates in the back, see the, the Vertical head plates, plates, the head plates. Do you want me to go down there and be your Dan away? Yeah, please. <laughs> Rifle. <laughs> Rifle shot. Okay. Reload. Head plates. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Then we're going to go transition to your pistol. Pistol E type. This closer one. And then pistol these head plates. That's it. Here we go, a little friendly competition to get the blood flowing. We were utilizing all the tools that we started practicing earlier in the morning and we're putting it in flourishing. Whether it be rifle to pistol manipulations, throttle control, really learning how to speed up and speed and slow down when we need to, and actually putting everything into fruition. So here you go.
2787. Don't miss, you can beat me. Seven, seven minutes. Jason's up. Stand by. You can cut a pain. Okay. Let's clear it. Let's Stand by. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Two. Amazing combat competition that these Navy SEALs put together. How do you feel? Great. It was fun shooting. What made you win this thing? Using time, understanding of time and using time. It was more about accuracy, it's not speed. So I just took my time. So you took your time? Yep. Okay. A lot of practice. Exactly. <laughs> Training a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it so was good fun. job, man. A lot of fun shooting. Good job. Thanks, you did fantastic. Thanks. It was a really impressive shooting, all Thanks. jokes aside. It's a great friend of mine, Han, Thanks. came from Istanbul, all the way from Istanbul Long for flight. this training. Long flight. 12 hours, and he's going to leave right after. Amazing training right here. Came out here and just took the win from all of us. You deserve it, buddy. Let's Thank get you, some buddy. food. Thanks, let's get some food. <laughs> <laughs>